Hey guys, Brent here from Marloop, back with another video. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to continue to talk about the voting phase, and in particular, what is a bonding curve, because I find them to be a particularly fascinating concept. So in the last video, we talked about how the community of Arloop token holders can signal their support for a project, as well as predict its success by staking their Arloop tokens to a project-specific bonding curve. So what is a bonding curve? Well, the idea was initially conceptualized by Simon de la Rouvière a few years ago, and we've been examining it in the context of Arloop for about a year and a half. A bonding curve acts as an automated market maker, and what this means is that there's no central authority issuing project-specific tokens, and there's no limit to the number of tokens that may be created. Now, we're only going to look at the basics of bonding curves in this video, but we'll examine further functionality and dynamics introduced by bonding curves in subsequent videos. So, the basic premise is this. Using your Arloop token, you can buy a project-specific token through a smart contract. The cost to buy those project tokens is determined by the current supply of those tokens. So as more tokens are created, the cost increases. And that's set by a algorithm that is hard-coded to the smart contract. At any time, you can sell your project token back to the bonding curve and get a reward in RLP, which is also based on the current supply. So what this means is that projects can be created and dissolved based on their relevance and interest from the community. And the earlier that you are buying your project-specific token, the less it's going to cost you in RLP. And similarly, the later that you're selling your project token back, the more RLP you are likely to earn. So I'm quite fond of the work that Wilson Lau had done in modeling these curves, and that was based on a few considerations. First, we want to incentivize early adopters more than later adopters. Anybody who is contributing RLP to a project has some expectation for potential return, and the growth of a project is likely to accelerate to some stage of maturity before decelerating and stabilizing. We want to model these curves based on that type of growth. So what we want to be able to do is set a cost appreciation for the token based on some factor of the supply increasing. And we can do that using Wilson Lau's equation seen here. So for example, if we wanted the cost of the token to increase by 25% every time that the supply doubled, we would set A in this equation to 25% and C, which is the base of log X here, we would set that to two for a doubling. And that curve would look something like this. So the incentive here is for people to identify meaningful and viable projects early as well as to productively guide its development because that will attract more attention from more individuals who want to be part of that project and they do so by buying the project specific token which increases its supply and therefore increases the cost. Now, in order for a project to be able to reward contributors to a project, as well as to fund some of its own development, we still need a way for it to extract some value from this bonding curve. And we're going to examine how we propose to do that in the next video. So make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you get notified when new videos are posted. And you can always check our website at rloop.org for more documentation and information. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.